Are you looking to add a new puppy to your family and trying to decide what breed to have? Well, in this video, we're gonna look at two breeds that could be your perfect canine companion, the Chow Chow and the English Mastiff. Welcome back to the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two medium to large breeds. The English Mastiff's ancestry has been traced all the way back to 55 BC. Julius Caesar came across the breed's ancestors when he invaded England. He took a liking to the breed when he saw how well they defended their homeland and worked alongside warriors during battles. These Mastiffs were eventually taken back to Rome. They were used to battle against wild animals like bears, lions, bulls, wild boar and even men in the gladiator arenas. The English Mastiff was fine-tuned to become more like the breed we know today during medieval times. They were used as hunting companions for large game, guard dogs and war dogs. In fact, English Mastiffs were used in the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. It was said that during World War II there were only 14 English Mastiffs that survived during the war. To prevent the extinction of the breed, America exported some of the English Mastiffs back to the UK to help rebuild the breed. Now let's take a look at the history of the Chow Chow. Famed for their teddy bear-like appearance, the Chow Chow is one of the oldest breeds in existence. It's believed that they originated in Arctic Asia 3,000 years before migrating to China via Mongolia and Siberia. They were first documented in paintings and on pieces of pottery. They were a particularly popular breed amongst Chinese nobility. One Chinese emperor once owned 2,500 Chow Chows that he used as hunting dogs. Sadly, they've been used for less ethical reasons over the years. Their coats were trimmed for the use of fur as well as being seen as a delicacy in China. In fact, the name Chow Chow is believed to have come from the Chinese slang word Chow, which means edible. They've had many more functional uses over the years, including herding and guarding livestock, as well as guarding properties. They first gained Kennel Club recognition in the UK in 1894 and the American Kennel Club recognised them in 1903. Today, they rank 64th out of 155 breeds in the American Kennel Club popularity list. The English Mastiff is a large breed that can weigh more than some men. Male English Mastiffs can stand up to 30 inches, which is around 76 centimetres, and weigh up to 250 pounds, or 113 kilograms. Females are slightly smaller at 27 and a half inches, which is around 70 centimetres, and weigh up to 200 pounds, or 91 kilograms. It's even said that particularly large English Mastiffs can even weigh as much as 300 pounds or 140 kilograms. The English Mastiff is known to have a short coat that sits close to their skin. However, you can also get long-haired English Mastiffs, although these are uncommon to come across. The English Mastiff can come in a variety of different colours, including fawn, brindle and apricot fawn. Silver fawn is also an accepted colour according to the American Kennel Club, but not in the UK Kennel Club. All English Mastiffs should have a black muzzle, black around the eyes, a black nose and black on the ears. The English Mastiff has a rectangular body which should be muscular, a broad head with wrinkles on the forehead, strong legs and a high set tail. The Chow Chow is a medium sized breed defined by their teddy bear like appearance with distinctive blue black coloured tongues. Male Chow Chows will grow to a height of around 20 inches or 50 centimetres at the withers and weigh as much as 80 pounds or 36 kilograms. Females will stand at about the same height but will weigh a little bit less, reaching around 70 pounds or 31 kilograms. As we mentioned, they have an iconic blue-black tongue. This sits inside a broad yet small skull. They have small triangular ears that sit erect on the head. Interestingly, the Chow Chow has 44 teeth, which is two more than most of the breeds. It takes a certain amount of work to keep your Chow Chow looking fresh and clean. They have a dense double coat that gives them the impression of a lion-like mane around their necks. To keep them looking regal, they need to be brushed around three times a week. Their coat comes in a variety of colours, including black, red, shaded red, cream, blue, white or fawn. 
Hey guys, really quick message. I just wanted to let you know, if you're not following us on Instagram already, we are doing tons of helpful, valuable content over there that I'm sure you'll love. We've got a couple of different pages that I think you'll really enjoy. First is our Fenrir business account, where we do loads of stuff about training, some of our product services, and just what we get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, building the fastest growing canine company in the world. And maybe you'll be interested in checking out my personal Instagram that's at I am Will Atherton. Again, if you're interested, there'll be links in the description. Sorry for interrupting the video. I'll let you get straight back to it. English Mastiffs are generally a good-natured breed. They are calm and affectionate, but they will protect their family if they feel their family is in danger. It's important to ensure you teach your English Mastiff obedience and manners from the day you get your puppy to ensure they become a polite, well-rounded dog. English Mastiffs adore their owners and want to please them, which makes the training a fairly easy task. However, this breed can easily become bored, so I would advise that you do training little but often. It's best to do a 10 minute session around four to five times a day to prevent your English Mastiff from losing concentration. This breed is also prone to separation anxiety. If it's not dealt with, it will lead to unwanted behaviours like chewing, barking, going to the toilet indoors and anxious pacing. The English Mastiff can be a sensitive breed. They don't respond well with raised voices. Positive reinforcement, plenty of treats and praise and consistency is the best way to train your English Mastiff. The English Mastiff needs up to an hour of exercise a day and you should not take your English Mastiff with you on long hikes or jogs or over exercise them as this can put too much pressure on their bones and joints due to their weight. The Chow Chow is a very intelligent breed and this can make them difficult to train. They are often compared to as cats as they more than likely do what suits them. This trait makes them appear quite selfish and they don't seem too interested in pleasing their owner. Despite this, it's important to have a positive approach to training. Consistency goes a long way, as well as plenty of treats and rewards. On the bright side, they're known for being a relatively clean breed, so toilet training is usually achieved early and easily. Their intelligent nature needs to be challenged. A bored chow chow can become destructive and show behaviours like barking, chewing or digging. Try keeping them entertained with puzzle toys, snuffle mats or toys like Kongs. Chow Chows need a moderate level of exercise. While they will join you on long walks or hikes, they would much prefer a shorter walk as 30 minutes a day is more than enough for them. English Mastiffs are an affectionate and loyal breed. However, they're best suited to families with slightly older children because of their size. The English Mastiff is a very large dog that could potentially accidentally knock over small children by accident. And it's always advised that you never leave your English Mastiff and children unsupervised. It's always important to ensure you show your children how to treat your English Mastiff and when to leave them alone for some time for themselves. English Mastiffs, if well socialised, tend to have no issues with other animals or pets. They can sometimes have issues with dogs the same sex as them. However, if they're socialised from puppyhood, this shouldn't be an issue. It's important that you socialise your puppy to as many situations, people or animals as you can to ensure you end up with a calm, well-behaved dog. It's advised that you do not leave your English Mastiff unattended with any smaller animals as every dog does have some level of prey drive and accidents can happen. Socialisation is important with all breeds but it's especially important with the Chow Chow. They have a naturally high prey drive due to their background as hunting dogs. This can lead to aggression with smaller animals or pets. They're also known to be unsure around other breeds of dog of the same sex. This isn't to be said that you couldn't own another dog or pet. From puppyhood, you should get them used to as many different situations as possible, introducing them to sights, sounds and smells of the world around them. Even with excellent socialisation, it would be advised to never leave them alone with animals for a long period of time. Chow Chows are naturally protective breeds and will attach themselves to their families and protect them should they feel the need to do so. They're better suited to families with older children. If you have small children, you shouldn't leave them alone with your Chow Chow without supervision. The English Mastiff and the Chow Chow are two very different breeds to look at. They both are protective of their families and are better suited to homes with older children. You may find that the English Mastiff is easier to train, but either breed would make a brilliant choice to become your loyal canine companion. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comment section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Chow Chow videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Chow Chow Show.